Anthony on Air podcast back for another episode more coming out of the Ghislaine Maxwell case as uh, some documents a deposition was unsealed and published by the Daily Mail we'll get into that plus is Ellen a big fat meanie we'll continue to talk about this we had a podcast about this not that long ago we'll put a link in the cards or in the description below on YouTube only. So if you're listening or watching on Facebook, you'll have to click over to our YouTube channel. Frankie C's back in the mix. How you doing, my man? Doing all right. That's a cute way to put that. A big fat meanie. Big fat it's meanie adorable. poo. It's worse when people are going to be mean. There's mean people. You can't avoid it. It's worse, if you ask me, when a mean person portrays themselves to be super nice. Then it's a lot worse. Right. Now, for people that don't know, I mean, the allegations against Ellen herself or against the staff of her show could be a little of both. There's a lot to dissect. Stick around for part two of the podcast here. Let's start with Ghislaine uh, Maxwell. That later. Okay. What was uncovered? Nice tease, my man. Uh, so, hey, you know. yeah, there was a 2016 deposition. Uh, this was just revealed by the Daily Mail. Former butler Juan Alessi was talking, and this is what he had to say. There is some disturbing stuff in this. He said that Ghislaine Maxwell uh, allegedly photographed topless girls as a quote unquote hobby, keeping the snaps with adult toys in Jeffrey Epstein's Florida mansion, according to these documents. The British socialite had an album full of photographs of people, young girls, girls uh, and others. Um, He said... And I remember that she had like a hobby. It was some girls were topless taking the sun. He said while insisting they did not show any bottoms or anything else. Alessi, who was seven years old, also said that he was given access to cash to pay probably over a hundred, quoting there, girls to massage Epstein and Maxwell and would find adult toys in the room, which he would wash off according to the male's documents. How sh- you right? <laughs> we just Yikes. made the same face. That's so disgusting oh, and wrong. Come on, man. It's so. Well, this guy's got to be somewhat. Um, what's the word? Like in, not involved, I guess, but like an accomplice. Right. Yeah. Yes. I mean, is he under any kind of scrutiny? I don't know, and this is what I've been wondering for quite a while now. Obviously, Epstein, right? A lot is yeah. being put to Ghislaine here as being a part of this whole ring and things. And then you get into the, a lot of this gray area because you have then the girls who did this stuff and the girls who got turned in, into like recruiters to go get other girls. And a lot yeah. of people will criticize those girls because on the one hand, it's unfortunate they were being abused and taken advantage of. Right. Which is wrong, especially the young ones. And then on the other hand, people are upset that they went out then and then did more wrong by bringing in more girls. It's a complicated thing, and it's not something I really have an opinion on or want to voice aside on. How could you? I mean, unless you're involved in that, like, how do you you wrap your head around something like that? Because on one hand, yeah, they're victims, but then they turn into... um, recruiters and then they're 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 doing more of the wrong they're helping the wrong in that case it's it's a weird thing that's a tough one on this i will say frankie c watch the netflix documentary because you get to actually hear from some of these girls and if you have an opinion on it watch the doc and then see if your opinion changes or not because it might you know how disturbing is the the netflix thing you know they don't it's 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 disturbing from like you know what disturbs me when you see photos of it like when you see photos of the rooms you know or like you yeah, like I where mean, it took place and then the girls talking about it and they're breaking down and you can see obviously they're super emotional about it it's it's uh you know it's not uh, a joy not, not the easiest thing to watch I'm it's sure. not it's not it ain't the worst thing in the world it's not graphic by i, I mean that by right. it's like I, not gra- I, yeah it can't be i'm sure yeah, but way, like that. Right. But it's not like a, it's not like a, a pleasurable experience. Like you're more I was more watching it out of curiosity as how for the info. Yeah. Again, I'm still trying to answer this question of how a person could could think that this was a OK to do and B I can get away with all of this is, is just honestly, that's I the, mean, 
the people, anybody that does anything wrong, I mean, yeah, their their head is messed up anyway. But you got to figure. The more people I involve in this, the more likely. I mean, is it the the more likely that they're going to get caught? I right, mean, which is inevitable. Which goes back to my other point, which is the girls that were victimized and then turned into recruiters. And then what about the other side where you have the employees? Because there were some employees that even appear in the Netflix doc and you look at them and you go, how much did you know of what was going on? Did you try and stop it? Again, this is a tough thing of like, did people put blinders on and just go, I, I need this job. I don't know what they're doing. I don't, I just want to come in. I want to tidy up the place and I want to go home and cash my pay. Like, you know, I got kids to feed. Jobs. Like, yeah, I'm, there are, but there's, you know, like you, like we say, there's these, you know, maybe they didn't know the extent to this stuff. You know, I'm sure there's, I'm sure there's some employee in the New York, you know, wing in the new york uh, house that didn't know what was going on down in florida or on the That's island possible and, you know i'm sure I'm there's sure, that like you know for this to have gone on for however long it went on they had to have practiced some kind of secrecy that was more than you would expect i guess right you know, they have to you know for lack of a better phrase know what they're doing and if it could get out to the point where people were making comments again we go back We'll put links in the cards, you know, on YouTube to the past couple of podcasts, especially the one where we shared Donald Trump's quote before when he was running for president, before he became President Trump. It was out there. It was well known among socialites that this was happening. So how much did the employees really know? And, you know, I'm sure there were employees that knew probably a lot and probably should have said something sooner and didn't. Either Probably paid to keep their mouth shut or even they're threatened. They, maybe they were afraid. Who knows? But we'll continue with Juan and, and this these documents that were just uncovered here by the Daily Mail. He says, and I quote, I would find things like um, a, a, a double dildo. Uh, he said about his time working at Epstein's Palm Bean Mansion from 1990 to 2002. So what is that? 12 wow. years? Yeah. But I find these things, put my gloves on, took it out and rinse it and put it in Miss Maxwell's closet, he said. He also saw a shiny black costume in Maxwell's closet that he believed was used, uh, you know, in these episodes. Alessi insists he knew they were Maxwell's toys, adult toys, because he knew where everything was in that house as part of his duties. One such well, toy was found in the trash by undercover cops. It was a purple jelly. Uh, oh, I guess a rear end wand. OK, uh, according to a police report obtained by the Daily Mail, this device is commonly used as an adult toy. A Palm Beach officer wrote in 2005 in a 2005 report, according to DailyMail.com. Alessi's statements was made to lawyers for Epstein's accuser, Virginia Roberts Gaffray. I was told I pronounced that wrong. As part of Probably. her 2015 defamation lawsuit against Maxwell for accusing her of lying by saying she was trafficked and abused. The case was settled in 2017 for an undisclosed sum, but some documents were ordered unsealed. More will be unsealed this week. A federal judge has ruled. Maxwell still being held in the Metropolitan Detention Center in Brooklyn on charges of conspiring with Epstein to sexually abuse young women. Well, there's no law against having marital toys. Aids right, yeah. right. But what this guy is saying is that they were around when they were, they were used with underage women. Well, he said is that what he's saying? he said that in the he said that she had a book of photos of women and some of them were young. He didn't say underage. Right. He said young. But and, and then he said, why do they even bring up the fact that there were toys around? I guess. Well, he's not bringing anything up again. These are these are things that are being uncovered from a deposition so that he was in there. Oh, but he was presenting ev new evidence or something. yeah and lawyers were firing questions at him and he was answering so that so it's not like okay. he's bringing stuff up he's being asked and, and we're just seeing the answers of it right now but that's yeah. the thing 
So young women in photographs, like let's put ourselves in Alessi's shoes for a second here. Young women in photographs, right? Um, he doesn't say underage. And then he's finding all these toys and things, okay? And like you just said, you know, just because you got a little kink in you doesn't mean you're breaking the law. How much does he know? Like, do, Beyond is he, any of this, yeah. Is he seeing the girls come in and out? Does he not? Does he come in before, after? Uh, who knows? Well, the photos are bad enough. I mean, that that should be, that's number one. I mean, that's, yeah. if these photos exist, that's, there's your smoking gun well, that's that's the thing. I Some wonder, like, I wonder where in the 12 years of his employment, because I, I don't know if this is the guy. There's a guy in the documentary who I think he saw something or he, he discovered something. Not that he saw like an actor or whatever, but he saw like a young girl or whatever it was. And the next day he quit. He was like this. It was down in the island, too. He was one of the people that went down to the island. He saw it and he was like, this is, uh, you know, this is wrong. But you got to think. Pilots who flew that plane, who flew his plane oh, sure. around, all the servants and cooks and whoever else. Like, there's, there's got to be a hundred people. There's got to be a bunch of people that kind of had an idea that something not right was going on. Like, can we really believe that Galen was the only one who was operating on his payroll that knew the worst ends of this? That there were underage girls. You know, because he uh, says he says that he was given money to pay girls, but it doesn't say that there was any sort of ignore. Like even when he was saying that, it doesn't say, "Oh, they were underage." Because again, paying women for a massage, right? Okay, so let's look at look. Let's let's play lawyer for a second, Frank. Let's play lawyer. We are nowhere near it. We don't know anything about the law. Right. So anybody thinking, oh, these guys are going to play lawyer, they don't know what they're talking about, you're right. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> but if, if, you're, if you're in charge of defending this Juan guy, right? Which The Ale Alessi guy, the, yeah, the butler? Somebody may have to do someday. Uh, and you know how defense lawyers can be. Um, that was insulting, but deserve it, I think, sometimes. You know, he's Sometimes. you're going to go in there and you're going to present your case. Again, I'm playing devil's advocate. This is another way I feel. This is devil's advocate defense lawyer. You're going to go, I don't know. They, uh, as far as I knew, these girls were going in and they were giving a massage and they were leaving. And then I was I was there to pay them. You know, it was all above yeah, water. As far as I know, they could have been they could have been 18, 19. They could have been 14. I don't know their ages. Yeah. I didn't look for you know, ID. I didn't you know, that could be his defense. Who knows? He could say, I wasn't in the room. I didn't know. Yeah, there were some adult toys I had to clean up, but I thought that was maybe him and Ghislaine afterwards. Or, you know, I don't you know. I don't know how it all worked. He could, he could play dumb. He could he play could. dumb. He could. He seems like he's giving them a little, but not enough to incriminate himself. And that's the other thing, too, because, like, let, let's play FBI agents now, right? If you're if you're investigating for those this, of you watching and listening, we are not <laughs> FBI agents. And do but not if you're if, to know what we're talking about, if you're in charge of investigating this, you need these people to tell you what went on and tell you enough. And, and and you know nobody's gonna. It's very rare the people that are going to incriminate them. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm sure there's going to be some immunity handed out here to get the to complete this investigation and the story because you got to oh, find sure. out what happened i would imagine so and if anybody has these guys have any kind of proof yeah i mean that that would help you know that's they're gonna leverage but, it as much as they can i mean it's easy to look back at this on hindsight now but do you think this guy and all the other people that were in his employ could have gone 10 12 year stretches without not going wait a second this isn't uh this isn't right like I, could, I, I don't know, man, because they were involved to have this kind of secret and all these people around you and not one of them for however many, what is it, 20, 30 years? Mm -hmm. Not one of them. It's crazy. And, it, how, how could that how could that be? It's crazy. And like, you know, you look at the girls tell the stories of what happened to them and they would come out and they would be emotional. And some of them say they would be leaving crying. 
this guy didn't this guy didn't go to his stash of cash to pay and see this girl is visually shaken and upset. Right. You know, yeah, there had to be stuff swept under the rug. There had to be people either paid off or threatened. If they, you know, okay, and there's I can't there, put it past it. There's the other part of it, Frank. I, I'm I'm Juan Alessi, and I'm you know I'm a good guy. I see this I see this girl, and now she's way too young, and she comes out of the room screaming, crying, and I go say something to Jeffrey Epstein like, "What are you doing? What's going on here?" And he turns around and tells me. I'm the most powerful man in here. Don't you see who I have lunch with this and that? I'll have your mother killed and this one killed and don't say a word. Like then what then what do you do? Yeah. I mean, right, who the hell knows? That's like a that's like the plot of the movie where like an innocent person gets tangled up into like that's any action movie. But almost any yeah. die hard where it's like poor John McClane's walking around and then next thing you know he gets sucked into this thing and he's got to fight his way out and kill a bunch of people to save, you know, or I shouldn't say what's the other one? Uh not uh, Die Hard, Lethal Weapon. That's like every Lethal Weapon plot where the two of them are just innocently walking along and then they got to get into this whole thing to save the family and, you know, they're going to kill Roger's family. they get Roger's chewed out family. and destroying the city, which it, they yeah, didn't yeah. do on purpose. I mean, who knows what all of these people were going through? We really don't know. We could only discuss and speculate and, and wonder. Yeah. I, I know this, pro this has probably been answered a million times. But I don't know the answer to how was this guy so rich? Nobody knows. And that, 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 this is where that Netflix documentary was really, really good. Because it, it does. I feel like most of us got into this story on chapter 37, right? We, we find out right. that this guy has been doing all these things. And what happened? How did this all start? In the Netflix documentary, it explains that he... He he got involved. I think it was something with the stock market where he would. He Every was like, what, 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 "Can we just get rid of? If we got rid of the stock market, <laughs> wouldn't that like eliminate half the the the, the financial crimes at least?" Uh, you hear Janine world? on this podcast tell the stories of when she worked on Wall Street and there was some crazy stuff going on. I never hear of like the most wonderful person coming out of the stock market. Yeah, and going, I have all millions of dollars. And I'm going to give it to every, you know, I'm going to be the best person in the world. That that person is not in the stock, mar stock market for some reason. You know, it's weird. I, I never worked on Wall Street, but I did work for a financial institution early, early on in my career. And I never saw anything crazy. But the people that worked there used to tell stories like of, of every story was like a crazy story. Like every story, you know, what would happen? What would happen if there were no stocks? Everybody just owned their business. They went around, they went about their lives owning their business. Nothing was publicly traded. What would happen? Would that be the worst thing? Uh, no, because there was a time where there wasn't a stock market. Right. Um, but um, it, stock I'm not saying take, tear it all down. I'm saying maybe we go about this a different way. I well, don't know. Yeah, but I mean, it's how businesses what raise. I know about this, what I know about the stock market. Literally, I know how to spell stock market. That's pretty much it. <laughs> yeah, businesses need to raise capital. It's kind of an important thing to, to for you know okay. capitalism. It's kind of an important thing. Um, but anyway, he started. I think he started in speculation, and he was able to really. He was good with the math and kind of predicting trends. From what I understand, it was something in that sort of nature. And in fact, he lied. There was something really interesting in the beginning. I can't remember now. He lied to get a job and then he was found out and the guy never fired him and the guy's in the documentary and he's like if i would have fired him this might have all been avoided and that poor guy has to live with that guilt because oh, all man. he did was give this guy a job and what happened was he winds up meeting this less wexler and that supposedly where all the money came from so allegedly supposedly um, he's doing this job and he hooks up with Les Wexler, who Les Wexler was the guy who wound up buying Victoria's Secret for like four million dollars or whatever. He bought it for 20 million and he turned it into this big billion dollar, you know, thing. So Les Wexler is one of these like billionaire guys and he had uh, Jeffrey Epstein working for him. So those two connect and then his his career sort of. Nobody really knows what happened because he gets a whole bunch of money from Les Wexler. Supposedly, the, that 
that uh, his New York home was Les Wexler's at one time, who just kind of like signed it over to him. And Les Wexler kind of gave him all this money. And, and Les Wexler's in the documentary, not like in a one-on-one -on -one interview, but they have like a clip of him where he's giving a speech and he talks about people who are conniving, who can take advantage of you and can be bad for your business. And they kind of tie that into the fact of like they're talking about his experience with Epstein. So I don't know how Epstein got money off of Les Wexler, defrauded him, or Les Wexler was into doing something not so great and Epstein helped him and then that's how he got his money. Nobody really knows, but those are the loose dots that they can connect on how this guy went from literally having nothing to being uh, this, uh, this powerful and all rich uh, guy. So much so that he owns what, he owns an island. He uh, owns, yeah, he owns this huge eighty million dollar thing, and uh, or owned, owned, or owned anyway. yeah, in the city, and then he, yeah, he bought an island. He he bought that island, and that's the one. See the island, the Manhattan home again. We now we're hearing all these things, and going just by a previous podcast, there were cameras in there, and he was filming stuff. That's a that's a tricky one. That stuff has to exist somewhere. I mean, somewhere, unless he erased it all, you know, and that, and that's the thing. I mean, here's where you can get crazy with conspiracy theories. Like, is it somewhere? Does somebody have it? If it was seized, did the people who seized it get rid of it? Like, you know, I mean, that. And this uh, Maxwell lady, maybe she got rid of it somehow. She was still around and free. Maybe she at did. At that point. There was a friend of hers did an interview on um, the British morning show. I think it's the BBC morning show. Who was the guy who used to be on CNN? Remember? Oh, um, yeah. Forget his yeah, name. His name. I can't think of it. Anyway, uh, she was on with him, and she was kind of like portraying this story of like Elaine being the victim, and she had no choice, and this and that. But when you see like some of the like when they arrested her, she had. Uh, they said she had aluminum foil wrapped around her cell phone as if that was going to stop her from being able to be traced or something like that. Like, I mean, weird, weird stuff like that. Yeah. If you're, if you're not doing any, if you're doing nothing wrong, you probably don't need tin foil around your phone. My thing is, is if that's, you know, if Ghislaine is the victim, the day he gets arrested, don't you go running to the authorities yeah. and say, thank God it's over. This is what's unless been happening. This, unless there are others involved that we don't know about yet. Well, when, you're, when you've got presidents and former presidents and princes and all these things involved, I mean, th this thing could get so... Who the hell knows how deep it goes? Who the hell knows? Who the hell knows? All we do know is what we just told you, which is all this new information coming from Juan Alessi. These are the first... Uh, releasing of documents that the judge has ordered that we're expecting to get more of as this week progresses. So next podcast on Friday uh, should be uh, chock full of some more information on this as we get it. So um, every day this there's new stuff. Oh, uh, this is gonna be like uh, yeah, forget it, forget it. This is gonna be the case of the of the decade, a century so far. You know, you look at it right now and you go, this this is should be. Remember how the OJ was like so the OJ case was so gripping in the 90s and how everybody talked about it and movies were yep. made about like, how is this not going to be the same thing? It, it, you go and look in the comments of our podcast and people are like, this needs this trial needs to be televised. Yeah, absolutely does. It would be it's it's right now. I feel like since since 2000 to now, this is the number one thing. Uh Legally, I mean, like legal case. It's a pretty I mean, big thing. There might thing. be a handful of others, but this is probably a big, the, the big one. Yeah, it's a pretty big thing. And I think everybody's so thirsty for it because it's, again, this high society, secret society thing, government versus the average people. And the average people kind of want to know what the hell, like what the hell's been going on here. You know, and if there are more people involved. Yeah, how many are people they? are involved. Yeah. And people that we that we know, you know, in a uh, celebrity, you know, any celebrity kind of way, you know, who the hell knows how many celebrities are involved, if any. Or yeah. Who this is going to be a big one. So Celebrities are involved. I'm more curious as to seeing 
who from the governmental side because you look at sure. you, you look at what's gone on here and this guy got a first of all when he gets arrested uh you, you watch the the police chief of West Palm Beach his face when he's like I did everything I could gathered all the information kept all the leaks quiet like did everything did my police work to a T to ensure that all these girls that were taken advantage of would would have their day in court would have their would would see him get put behind bars he goes and then what happens is he signs a sweetheart deal where he gets one year of jail time in which he can leave the jail leave in the morning come back at Who's night this? Epstein the the, the that Epstein signed that yeah, Epstein signed it. Like the, the 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 police chief is telling the story about how he basically put together as best all the evidence. He wrapped everything up in a little package as great as he could, not even involving the FBI because he knew these were high profile people in West Palm Beach. Like, did all these things to do his police. This guy's like a little Commissioner Gordon, you know, like not kicking things right out the chain right away to make sure that he's got it all as as put together as he could possibly do. And he, he did all this work just to watch this guy sign this sweetheart deal where he would literally leave in the morning and come back to sleep in the jail at night. And was told, don't go, you can't leave, you can't leave the Florida, you can't leave the county or whatever, he was told not to leave. He was photographed in New York in the afternoons. Because he would go, so, get on his plane, he'd leave, go do whatever he was doing, get back on his plane, come back and check back in, in the jail and go to sleep. In order to, to sign a sweetheart deal, you have to have some kind of something to offer. Well, or you have, or you have somebody. You either have something to offer, or you have somebody high up in government ranks going, "Give this guy this this deal." Now, yeah, that's, uh, the guy that's who screwy. gave something's missing there. The guy who gave him the deal, this Acosta guy. He basically his his side of it was, it's a lot of them versus him his word against theirs there's no proof we were we were lucky enough to get him to agree to this thing and you know he was saying that nobody would have put this in but everybody was like that's that stuff is just that stuff is just crazy i'm sorry and, but if you're arrested and, how do you have any chance to why do you would you agree to something it's not up to him well because if they yeah. go to trial they you know, it's like any other plea deal they try and get you to plead just to get you in jail just to get it over and get it done with get you off the streets uh as yeah, opposed to going to trial and losing on a technicality and then you walk that's why anybody gives a plea deal but yeah, but in his sweetheart deal in his sweetheart deal frank it said that they could they couldn't um bring any other cases against him it was some crazy ass thing that they put in there that was like he cannot be further prosecuted for this it was absurd <laughs> this guy <laughs> it was absurd I'm telling you, you watch this thing and you're like, what the hell? What's going on here? You know, there's so many layers oh to it, though. God. There's so many layers. But, you know, even reporters, there was one reporter who wrote a story about it. You know, all this stuff. And they were in on all of that. And then they were like Vanity Fair or some magazine or whoever it was. I can't remember. They wouldn't publish it because they were like, we can't corroborate the story. And if we do this, we'll get sued. And so they never published her. And, and in the documentary, they show all the pieces and then they put on the screen, by the way, none of this was ever proven and we can't prove it. And we have to say we can't prove it or they can be, you know, sued for defamation or whatever. Man, it's a lot so of nothing it. that has been exposed yet. None of this uh, the photo, you know, all this stuff. There's zero proof right now, except for uh, uh, testimony, I guess. Well, I. And the, and whatever proof there is, we just don't know. Like the only thing we know is what oh, was they're in, not releasing to the public. Right, sure. ongoing investigation. What we know was in the documentary. What the what the police in the documentary decided to say, what the lawyers decided to say, is the only thing that we that we know of. I mean, if the, and that's and that's why Ghislaine was kind of important because it was kind of like if there's bodies buried somewhere, Ghislaine knows where they are, and you know. And or has some of them or whatever, and she could point everybody in the right direction. Who knows? Wow. Who knows? Um, you got five minutes for Ellen. We could wrap this up. Sure do. All right. So we'll be following the Ghislaine thing again. If you're on Facebook or YouTube, uh, make sure you subscribe to our channels to watch the show. 
Uh, if you just like listening to it, we're on every single podcast network, uh, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, uh, um, um, Spotify, everywhere. So you can subscribe on any one of the uh, podcast networks that you prefer and uh, make sure you put your notifications on so that you know when we put a new episode live. So the story today now in the post is that Ellen is starting to be uh, deserted by uh, A-listers as an investigation has been opened up on her show. Uh, the I believe this is Warner Brothers, but well, now it's called Warner Media. They launched a probe following accusations from current and former staffers on the show uh, that they've brought in a third party to question and figure out what's been going on on Ellen's show. And as we said, this is worse because like she ends every episode of her show with "Be kind," you uh-huh. know, and then who knows if she's being really kind. So let's look at both sides of this. And again, you can go back to a previous podcast. We'll put it in the cards or in the, in the link below on YouTube. Uh, we talked about it. I played for you the clip from Steve Sharippa, right, of him yep. and his exchange with Ellen. What was the other example now? I can't remember what it was. Oh, the crew. When she had right. to start uh, filming her show from home, she told the uh, she hired a separate crew to film the show in her home as opposed to her normal crew crew who runs the cameras and lighting and audio and everything that's to me to me frank and i lost it for a second to me that's the biggest sign of a problem when you go and hire yeah not you don't trust your own your own crew you don't trust your own guys and gals i don't get that that's a big unless the only thing i could think of is if the crew that she hired is some kind of uh I want to say like uh, quarantine special. Nah, crew come on. They know what they're doing and bullshit. They know how to do. I don't know. I'm trying to. I get play it. Devil's advocate here. Yeah, I get it. But it, it's a camera's a camera. Lights a light. You know, bring it in there. Yeah, wash your hands. So. Wear the mask. Like, like there's no way to like sterilize everything. I, I don't know. Maybe they have some kind of special crew that does that. It could be. But I, I see what you're saying. Could be. But I, I doubt I, it. I doubt it. I doububt it. Um, and now uh, like. It, so again, it, is it Ellen or is it her, uh, her cat, her crew, her you know, so people that run the show? It seems like it might be a little of both, and it seems like some of the the head people that run the show maybe aren't doing the best job. But it also feels like, and again, shit runs downhill. It all starts with leadership, you know. If she's sure. not great. To the two people running everybody else, the two people running everybody else are not going to be great either. Of course. But if the shit starts below Ellen, maybe the person below her is a jerk and, and the shit starts there and runs downhill. I'm not, I'm not saying Ellen's innocent. I'm not saying she's guilty of this, but I'm just saying we don't know yet. I mean, unless uh, there are people saying that it's her. Well, now more and more start stuff is starting to come out. So here's some of the new uh, revelations here. Uh, comedian Kevin T. Porter branded her, quote, notoriously one of the meanest people alive on Twitter and appealed for insane stories about her. Um, the response included an allegation from TV writer Benjamin Simon, or C-I-M-O-N, S-I-E-M-O-N, uh, that she, quote, has a sensitive nose. So everyone must chew gum from a bowl outside her office before talking to her. And if she thinks you smell, you have to go home and shower. That's a little nutty. The gum outside the office is a little nutty. The gum thing. So if she has everybody who comes in has to chew gum first and then come in. That's fucking crazy. That's crazy. Yeah, that's crazy. Like there's no, mm-hmm. like there's I'm trying no, to, like, like what if it's this? Is she just being nice, offering everyone gum? Like again, but if there's a if there's a rule that she has, then that's different. But if it's like, hey, here's a jar of gum, you know, everybody, everybody's welcome to it. Yeah, I don't know. There was a uh, let me see here. Um. 
Others say they were instructed by managers to not speak to Ellen if they saw her. Most blamed exec producers and senior managers, but argued Ellen needed to take more responsibility for the workplace environment. One added, if she wants to have her own show and have her name on the show title, she needs to be more involved to see what's going on. I think the executive producers surround her and tell her things are going great, everybody's happy, and she just believes that, but it's her responsibility to go beyond that. Another ex-employee said they took medical leave for a month to check into a mental facility following a suicide attempt, but when they returned to work, they were told their position was being axed. They said, you'd think that if someone just tried to kill themselves, you don't want to add any more stress to their lives. Another former employee said that they were fired after taking time off on medical leave following a car accident and time away for family members' funerals. The fourth person to speak out said they were given a warning for creating a GoFundMe campaign to raise money for medical costs that weren't covered by their company health insurance. Just 24 hours after launching it, they said they were told to take it down because of concerns that it might hurt Ellen's image. Yes. See, like, See, but the, the, everything you said there sounds like sounds like I mean, she's I got a whiny staff. <laughs> the, no, yeah, right. No, it sounds like the people below, like right below Ellen, people running the show. Like, yes, Ellen should be more involved, absolutely. But it sounds like she just doesn't know what's going on, it and could the be. people right below her are telling her everything's great, and in the meantime, they're, you know stomping down on the little people it could be so i I, i'm not disputing that it's shitty over there because it probably is and it sounds like it is but how much of it yeah ellen should be responsible because it's her show but if she's being blindsided and she does her her time there goes home and she's not really seeing what's happening yeah that's her responsibility to look into it but if people are pulling wool over her eyes yeah, it's it's a weird thing. And again, it, it, there's a fine line because when you're Ellen, right, a lot of people just want stuff from you. And you can't have every Tom, Dick, and Harry on the staff going, oh, I got this. You know, like every day somebody would come crying to you trying to get money out of your pocket. So, Right, I, and I'm sure Ellen isn't handling people's health insurance problems and right. I'm sure she's not in charge of any of that. Right. And my, my point is, is I understand there being some need to guard her, you know, yes. um, but at the same but time, it is her show, right. At the same time, they have been doing this show for 20 years. Like, right. you know, I mean, you think I get, I get guarding her from some of the new people, making sure people are cool, doing your dil- due diligence and all that stuff. But, you know, again and again, you're talking about an industry where hit shows like Ellen are literally making money hand over fist. You know what I mean? Like everybody on that staff should be well compensated. Everybody on that staff should have really good health insurance if you've been there for a long time. Agreed. You know what I mean? There's no reason. Absolutely. To run that stuff, and I get TVs or TV shows, and everybody's got budgets and advertising's down on traditional media. I understand all of that, but you're still you're talking about the cream of the crop, the top one percent of the one percent of television personalities that are making a boatload of money. And again, yeah, I agree with that absolutely. I, I go back, Frank, to, and I hate to keep doing this, but I go back to Jay Leno, who I feel like is the golden standard of broadcasting. Jay Leno, a lot of people don't like him. Jay Leno did some really shitty stuff. Jay Leno kind of scammed David Letterman out of The Tonight Show, right? Jay Leno's got a lot of issues. But Jay Leno would go and take care of his staff, every last one of them. There are more than one occasion where NBC went to him and said, hey, we have to cut staff, we have to do this, we have to do that. And he said, no, take it out of my paycheck. Keep everybody on staff. That's thing to do. Yeah. And the thing is, is like, yeah, no. if somebody was starting a GoFundMe because they had to pay for something and they couldn't pay for it, I understand that it's a bad look for for Ellen's, you know, rep. But how it is? Again, this is your team. You got the money. You're giving out twenty three hundred dollars worth of product to audience members to look great every single day. How could you not steer some of that towards somebody who really like? If you know that person and they really need it. 
I'm yeah. sure, you know, Ellen or whoever would want to take care of that. You know, if yeah, I'm making $30 million a year and little Jimmy or Sally, you know, needs a couple grand to, to get right because of some unfortunate incident. Don't make sure nobody knows. Peel it off to them. Give it to them in an envelope, whatever. Don't make a big deal out of it. Exactly. No, I agree with you. Ellen should definitely be. I mean, it's her show. It's her name on everything. So she should be more aware of what's going on in her in her place. I, I think my my thing is I want everybody to be, you know, nice. the good guy and happy. I, know, I want I know. Ellen to not I know. be like. And I, I like Ellen but too. And sometimes and he, it ain't like that. You know what else? Let me swing back around the other way before we wrap it up. And not to say this is really proof, but she was on Comedians in Cars Getting Coffee. I would like to think that Seinfeld wouldn't really pal around with somebody if they were kind of a piece of garbage. Yeah, I hope so. You know? Who who knows? I mean... I mean, sometimes you don't know what's going on with... I mean, I'm sure they don't talk every day. And, you know... Right. They're close because they're in the same industry. They're, They're comedians. But are they, how often do they speak to each other? I, I don't know. I mean, I'm sure Jerry Seinfeld doesn't know what's going on on the Ellen show behind the scenes. Yeah. I don't know. I just feel like, you know, you look at all the big, powerful people like like Ellen, like Oprah. Like, people said that Oprah wasn't that nice. And that's the other part of it, too. Hey, when you're building an empire out, you can't, it's not easy to be, like, responsible for everybody's little issues day to day. But you know what? Your number two and three better be damn good to make sure yeah. that all that shit's being taken care of. That is true. You know? Yeah, you're right. You're right. When it when it's when it comes to everything starts, yeah. when everything comes from the top, you're right. That's the way it has to be. And Ellen being at the top should have the people below as just as good as Ellen, if not just a shade under. You know, it should be. Ellen should be the be-, be the best person at the place, and it should tri- that should trickle down. Like it's a crummy. It's I hate to use a sports analogy, but look at the Mets and Yankees, and we're you're you're looking at two and listening to two Mets fans here. Mets ownership was a nightmare. The team on the field was a nightmare. Yankees ownership was buttoned up, was right, was proper, did everything correct, and they got twenty seven championships to show for it. Yeah, and everybody hated Steinbrenner. But at least they took care of their people. He got his he got his stuff done. I don't I don't hear many people coming out of the Yankee organization going, Oh, it's terrible. Don't you don't want to work here. Yeah. He may have been mean or, you know, uh demanding, he yeah. Care, you know, he paid everybody, he got everybody. You know, I don't I've never heard any real you know big complaints coming out of this out of Steinbrenner's no, the I mean, big, he was the big knock against him was the facial hair. Like don't have facial hair and you got to have your hair cut. That's what, and everybody was like, that's messed up. But you know what? You want to win. You want to be part of greatness. Like, you yeah. Know? That's, that's, that's the job. But yeah, you're right. Uh, Ellen needs to, I mean, has she ad- addressed any of this? She hasn't said anything, which is also kind of crazy because again, that's weird. If that's me, I'm going right to Twitter and going, Hey, listen, everybody, uh, this is, you know, these are some crazy oh, yeah. cases and, you know. Forget Twitter. Well, maybe Twitter too, but you have your show. I'd spend a whole show. Right. And then the know, other- I'd be like, listen, this is, these are my, I'd bring the whole crew out and say, we'll take care of them. I'm not, you know, anybody has an issue, they're welcome to, to bring it up with, you know, I'd try to make the best, you know, do the best I can to make sure everybody's happy. And Here's- if they're not, bring it up right and that's the thing you could literally employ somebody money is being printed up there so much that you can employ somebody whose sole job is to do just that be the hr person make sure everybody's good make sure everybody's got all the you know whatever they need you know to there's a problem that's the person that solves it right um there's gotta be an hr person at that company i'm sure there is but listen to this joint statement here we'll leave it here Executive producers Ed Glavin, Mary Connolly, and Andy Lassner said they take the stories of the employees very seriously. They added, quote, over the course of nearly two decades, 3,000 episodes and employing over 1,000 staff members, we have strived to create an open, safe, and inclusive work environment. We are truly heartbroken and sorry to learn that even one person in our production family has had a negative experience. It's not who 
we are and not who we strive to be and not the mission Ellen has set for us. So it's that like excuse of like, hey, we've, we've done a lot of episodes for a really long time. You're going to have a couple of, uh, you know, broken. Uh, take that for what you will. Which, I know there are going to be people that aren't uh, that are unhappy with stuff. Oh, you got to work later. You gotta right. This. That's not the stuff they're complaining about. Yeah, and I mean, some of the stuff sounds like, you know, you're taking off time, you're leaving for this or that. Like, if you're not there doing your job, you right. know. But, but if there is there is stuff like, you know, you lose your job after you come back from a funeral. You know, that's, is that what, was that, what that allegation was? Yeah, and that's a weird thing, too, because a lot of people that get into this profession don't really take a lot of time off for stuff like that. You know what I mean? Like, a lot of people, like... You look at athletes, you look at TV people, like they have a baby or they have a loss in the family. Like they're kind of, they hop right back into it right away. Most people. Yeah, but you, you're not expected to. No. And you shouldn't be expected to. Yeah, of course, if you need the time. You know, if there's a death in your family, you get the time off and that should not affect your job. If, uh, well, if someone's sick and your health insurance doesn't cover it, you're, I feel like it's in your... It's your right to do whatever you can legally to obtain that money. Sure. Creepiest That's thing from simple. creepiest thing from this episode that I can't get past, besides obviously the the underage uh, Epstein stuff, is the black uh, Pretty suit. Pretty creepy. The black suit is the creepiest thing in Ghislaine's closet. The black suit. Yeah, the guy said there was like a black. Oh like, yeah. Full body. Uh, I mean, like, that's pretty creepy, but it, you know. Like, how, how much longer until we find out that that scene in Pulp Fiction was... <laughs> oh, the gimp. Right? Like, I, like, you think they had, like, people chained up in a, in a, in a chest? <laughs> I'm sure there was something like that at one point going on. I'm, you know, with this, it's just every time you, something else is exposed, it's creepier and creepier. And it's just disturbing and... And uh, it's terrible. Yeah. Juan Alessi said he also saw, saw a shiny black costume. I don't know why that's just weird. That's weirding me out. So obviously, like a latex thing? Yeah. Like, yeah. Like, that's a lot of kink. That's a, that's a lot of kink in there. Besides all the, uh, you know, the inappropriate stuff. Yeah. There's a few too many in that house. That's the thing. Like, even if you put aside all the inappropriate stuff, there's probably a ton of kink going on in there between the two of them. That That's just bizarre. Hey. As long as it's between consenting adults, yeah, you know, kink is your kink. But uh, the other, st you know, these these people don't seem to be uh, on the up and up, so to yeah. say the least. I feel like if we we get into the area of kink, we need Janine for that. We have to wait for her to come back to start talking. Yeah, about we're not. Stuff. I don't think we're qualified <laughs> to talk about kink, and nobody out there wants to hear from us. <laughs> That's her area of expertise. What's hanging from the coat rack today? Oh, that, so that, I have a little a bone to pick, and I hear I'm not the only one. That is a, an air pump for a pool that I bought. A little, I bought a little pool because I wanted my dog, uh, I don't know if anybody knows out there, but my dog is not, is not doing well health-wise. She's stable, but she has, uh, she has cancer, and her muscle mass has been decreasing a little bit. So I bought a little pool. That I wanted to go in with her, just a little kid pool, you know, and I, I bought it, blew it up in the yard. And when I blew it up, literally, it's about, <laughs> it blew up to about this big. Shut now, up. Now, the pool that I, bought, that I bought, the advertisement for it showed a grown man, three kids, and a dog <laughs> sitting comfortably in the pool. With room to spare. Right. Now, I blow this thing up and I fill it up. It's literally the size of like, uh, I don't even, uh, like you can fit me in it, sitting down, and that's it. <laughs> and it's about maybe this deep. Yeah. So I wanted it to be maybe just me and my dog. It didn't have to be a bunch of people. Me and my dog, and I wanted it to be a little deep enough so that my 15-pound dog can be off the ground and swim a little. Right. But I put her in there and she stands on, on the bottom. She has her feet on the bottom and she's up 
the water's up to here. And she just looks at me. And I'm like, <laughs> yep, this is what I bought. There's no better time than when your dog, your simple-minded animal can look at you and go, are you for real? You this go, is the best. Yeah, that's pretty much the look I got. And I said, uh, <laughs> I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> this is what I got. And it was, I bought it online. And from what I understand, people who buy pools online often are disappointed with the, the result. That, so that's the, that look that a dog can give you when they go, I sniff other dogs' asses and lick my own privates, yet I would never do something this stupid. How did you but pull this, it off? But this is beneath me. <laughs> <laughs> this pool is beneath the both of us, and I'm embarrassed for you having spent. To be fair, I, I think I spent like $30 on it, but still. Yeah. It was not what I expected. Um, you're not the first person that I've heard say this story, actually, because I saw a TikTok where a mom was like, oh, my son was so excited to order that we ordered this pool. And then she showed a video of the pool and the pool was literally it looked like a model. It was that it looked like a model of a huge pool. It was so yeah. tiny. Let me see if I could bring up the. So I'm guessing that this is what it looks like. I'm guessing, yeah, uh, see if you could pull it up. I'm guessing this insane. is a very... Want, oh. Oh, go ahead. I was going to say, I'm guessing this is a very common thing, especially in the wake of the pandemic where everybody, including myself, were like, we should order a pool for the kids or even for us to just kind of sit in the backyard. Friends of ours we know ordered... Nick ordered that whole crazy pool that had like pipes and everything that you had to like put together. It was like a like a temporary pool. Um, cause yep. you're like, I, I don't know. We got It's going to be not, you know, we're summer. We got a social distance. We can't go to the beach. We can't go to the pool. We can't do this. We can't do that. Let's get a pool in the backyard. We'll fill it up with water. At least we'll have that. So I think a lot of people rushed to go buy these things. And I think a lot of people were out there scamming and taking advantage of people. Okay. So here's the pool. Uh, let's see. All right. So this is the first picture. Of it. Did this okay. come from Amazon? Uh, I don't know. I think I got it on eBay, but it was from like a store. It okay. was from just some guy. Okay. All right. So this is the the pool. I this isn't it. the exact ad for the pool. This is just what it looks like. Right. And this was roughly the ad that I saw for it. All right. And I'm <laughs> right. like, all right. There, there are four, four, you know, there are four people in there sitting comfortably. Uh, yeah, four people. And, yeah. But they're kids, sure. But I feel like if I fill the pool all the way up, I could put my dog in there who comes maybe 10 inches off the ground. Right. She my dog could probably get some, some swimming activity going on. Float you know, around, get some exercise. Be, yeah. 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 It doesn't have to be ridiculous. And I get literally, it's like I could, I could cook lasagna in the thing. That's basically <laughs> it. <laughs> That's the size I get. <laughs> I and went to again, order a pool and I got a tr I got a lasagna tray. <laughs> a lasagna tray. That's basically <laughs> what I got. And the the picture I showed, I don't think that's the brand, but that was basically the idea. I don't want to poop on the brand that I showed you. Yeah, so yeah. That's probably not the right thing, but that was generally the thing that I saw. Well, here's the guarantee that you got scammed, or that it is a scam, and you should complain. If it's that friggin' small, why do they? Why do you need a, a pump to go along with it? Like that's ridiculous. Like I did have to blow it up because I mean it's it's big enough that I would I would have been there for half an hour and I probably would have passed out because the whole thing is the whole thing is what say it again the whole thing is what the whole thing is inflated going around and I it's inflated okay you know and I probably didn't need a pump. But I, I have one, and I. Oh, like, you know, I'm gonna okay. Did you buy the pump? I thought the pump maybe came with the pool. No, the no. Oh, okay, the pump never mind. Didn't come with the pool. No, no. no. Okay, Thirty dollars yeah. just for the 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 pool itself. I I jumped and, to a conclusion because the pools that we were looking at, I was like, you better get a pump because the last kitty pool we had, I did have to blow up manually, and I was nearly passing out every single time I had to do it. Right, I did that just so I don't die. Cutting <laughs> it. <laughs> all right well now let's try making lasagna off, in what, it. a dollar for a lasagna tray i should <laughs> i don't know if the uh latex or whatever the hell it's made out of is gonna last in the oven oh. but it seems to be holding up outside <laughs> <laughs> so so she's just sitting in it now and just going like what is this like what are you doing i put her in it you know it's funny because you know when you hold the dog over the water they do this yeah you know she does that a little bit 
and she can like wait. Go ahead. She does oh, it a little I'm bit. Again. Yeah, so she does this motion a little bit. Then I put her in and she stands there. And then as soon as I walk away, like she kind of jumps out. I wanted to be able to get in there with her and like hold her as she's swimming a little bit. Yeah. And maybe, you know, let her go on her own a little. Not, it wouldn't fit me in her. It wouldn't, <laughs> you know. I, 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 I could sit in there by myself, but it would leave no room for her. That's funny, man. That's really funny. And I think, yeah, it would come up sitting down in like cross leg, it would come up to my waist. <laughs> so that's what I got. Warning to everyone out there buying a kiddie pool online. Yeah. My new obsession is I actually just said this to my wife. I, I, you come across these products. And a lot of it is like Facebook advertising. You know, people are advertising on Facebook and it's so cheap for something. Like I saw a hammock, full on hammock, the metal parts, everything big, beautiful. It was like forty nine ninety nine, And I'm like, this is a $300 <laughs> product. Like part of me wants to kind of order these things just to see how hilarious the outcome is. We should do that. You know, and just, just buy, buy the cheapest thing. That's supposed to be like a hundred dollars right. and they sell it for five. Right. We should see what it's like. Buy, go out and just buy all those huge bargain. Can't like, like, how can this be, you know, just to see exactly how crummy it really is. One of those things I was actually considering. One of those things I was actually considering uh, buying, as, as everyone might know, I'm a huge Star Wars fan. And I saw this grill for sale. And people uh, might not know what it is, but an AT-AT yeah. is a vehicle in Star Wars. It's one of the, the thing that, you know, it walks, that big metal. Yes. Uh, okay, the vehicle. And the side, you open it up and it's a grill. It looks like a huge mechanical donkey or camel or horse right. or something. Yeah, go ahead. Exactly. So they were selling, it looked like that you know, big size, and you open up the side of it, and it's a big grill. Okay. And it was, original price was like $1,399. $1,399. Right. This had it marked down to $150. <laughs> <laughs> and got to tell you, I was that freaking close. <laughs> I was like, I got to get this thing. It's amazing. But I, I'm... I, I almost got it because I'm a star. And I would use it. I, don't know if you can. I could use it, but it's a charcoal grill, and I'm not a huge fan of charcoal grills. So I, I was like, uh, it's not worth $150. But let me see if I can bring it up. See, I feel like I wish we could we could start like a GoFundMe or start like a pool of money with the audience to be like, you know, like like everybody put in two dollars. We'll order this crap, and we'll see just how crappy it really is. Right. So that's the that's the thing. Oh my god! And that looks massive too. That looks huge. Yeah, it's a it's a regular size grill. You open. There's other pictures that I have it opened. Yeah, there's a picture of it open. There's the grill. Okay, but that's mm -hmm. focused. But you know, and they had it literally. It's thirteen hundred dollars, and this there was selling it. I saw, and of course, here's your other here's your other red flag. I saw it for sale on Facebook. Yeah, you know, there's a Facebook ad that slides up, and I'm like, uh, one hundred and fifty bucks. Guarantee, I'm gonna have to put this thing. To oh, could you imagine if it comes in like one billion pieces? Like you gotta, here's all the metal exactly. for it. You got you have to weld it together yourself. <laughs> Right, you have to shape and mold the metal yourself. <laughs> they give you the grill, maybe that's it. You get a huge but, block you know, of metal and an instruction book. I would have bought it in a second. Yeah, <laughs> but I can't be dealing with charcoal. I, I, but I think you could. They sell things online where you can convert charcoal into gas grills. See, I've been asking around about that, and I can't, everybody said no. It's ridiculous. It's not worth it. It's like hundreds of dollars. I don't. Can you do that? Can you? Yeah, is that I mean, a thing? It, it's just it's just a little rod. There's a you know, 
There's the uh, the regulator, and that goes into just a rod, basically with holes in it, and that's what that's what pumps out the, the flames. Yeah, but I feel like the grill itself, you would have to like drill into to run the thing. Wouldn't you have to drill like one hole? That's it. It's metal. I can't be drilling into metal. What am I? Uh... <laughs> what do I look like? Well, as you're welding it together, you just you you know you put a hole in it. That's basically it. Oh, I'm losing Frankie C there. I can't hear you now. Twelve feet long. Oh, there you are. Up oh, there we go. Okay. Nope, I lost you again, my man. Can't hear anything. Oh, Frankie. Can you hear me? Oh, there you go. Now I can. Yeah, I don't know what I did. All right, well, we did an hour plus, but we were only supposed to do 20 today, so I think we should just, uh, we'll leave it there. Yeah, God bless anybody that hung out and made it this stay far. Stay tuned. I would really love to order some of this crap. I'm kind, I gotta be honest with you, I'm kind of curious to see what, if that, that's real or what, I'm what telling you, would like, show you go up. on wish.com. Yeah. And there's like, all these things are so cheap. The catch I'm is they take like, it really take like a month to get to you, number one. And number two, you don't know how it's going to be when it gets to you. So, I've never been on Wish. You do Wish? Is it good? I bought, you know, I bought a few things from Wish and nothing like crazy. I bought like, like I like to draw. So I bought like pens. Mm -hmm. um, I bought some pens, which are actually very good. I bought some guitar picks, which were also very good. Right. Um, but I, I, you know, I've never bought anything over like five or ten bucks by the way um in the ever evolving argument of is it an at at or an at at yeah i saw somebody post on instagram a shirt from disney world that had okay. a picture of it and it said where it's at at so that's, i don't, I don't even think that's a debate i don't think it's at at what well, it stands for All Terrain Attack something or other. It's an acronym, so it's at it's AT AT. Um, I don't know. I know you nerds fight about that. That was a big debate. I don't fight about that. Yeah, I don't think we nerds fight about all of it. All Terrain Armored Transport is what it stands for. Okay. And so, I mean, I, I guess the the shorthand you can call it an at at, but then again, there's an ATST as well. Oh, controversial. Who knew the end of the podcast would be more controversial than the beginning of the you podcast? You can't call that. You know, if it's an AT, if it's an ad at, you can't do the same thing with an ATST. All right, well, Frank is going to continue talking about this, and we're going to end the podcast here. So I'm going to keep him. talking. Just cut me off when you feel <laughs> like it's time. So an ad at. There's like and, four Star Wars nerds that are like, no, let him go, Ant. To let him. <laughs> Finally, we're getting to something welcome. good. Oh my god. If we turn this into a Star Wars nerd chat, I am all in. I want you in the comments. Let me, I want to hear from all the Star Wars nerds out there. We will go off on Star Wars to the point where this guy can't take it anymore. And he just cuts me off. So an ad ad is uh, all-terrain armored transport, whereas an ATST right. is something completely different. That's, Thank um, you guys for listening. Let's see, all-terrain scout transport. Making it this far so in the podcast. You can't shorten that into at stuff. Go to anthonyonair.com for so all our So that's where my whole thinking comes from of ATAT. -AT. And if you have an ATAT, -AT, you can't.